with a giant list in it. Um, so uh, a few of you commented on the video that Peter and I did reviewing the Box of Delights. You left really lovely and encouraging comments. It was so fun to see the reaction to that. Uh, so I, uh, a couple people talked about, you know, the upcoming books that we were going to be reading and I thought I would film a video on that. Um, and I have you know, time to time in my phone, when I think of a title that I think would be fun to read aloud to Peter, I write it down in my notes app and I have here 31 titles. They add up quickly. So I will jump right into the books. And the first two are ones that I would like to read in February because they are winter themed. Uh, so the first one is The Adventures of a South Pole Pig by Chris Kurtz. And it's about a pig who travels to the South Pole. And I'm pretty sure wants to like run in the Iditarod. And that sounds fascinating all on its own. And then 12 Kinds of Ice by Ellen Brian Obed. One of the main reasons I really want to read this is it's supposed to have absolutely stunning illustrations to accompany it. And I find that really lovely to have in a read aloud, to have beautiful pictures to accompany it. Um, and it just sounds so wonderful. Uh, next is The Adventures of Cat Vinkle by Elliot Perlman. This is about a cat and a Dalmatian that become really wonderful friends. And this is another one with really uh, beautiful full page illustrations in it, um, you know, side by the side by side with the text. And it just sounds wonderful. Then The Flying C Classroom by Eric Kastner. I don't know much about that. Obviously, there's going to be some magic in there if it's called The Flying Classroom. Um, so we will have to see and I will let you know. I will report back after we read it. Then The Curious Lobster by Richard Hatch. This is about a lobster who wants to see what is out there in the world outside of the ocean. So he, so he goes on a big adventure um, and travels around and you get to follow him on his adventure. I have never read a book with a lobster protagonist. Next is Masterpiece by Elise Broach. This is has a beetle as our main character and I really don't know much else about it besides that. So. Sorry, that's not a very interesting, um, you know, title to give to you. Uh, then The Water Horse by Dick King Smith. Uh, Dick King Smith also wrote what is also on the list. Yes, Babe the Gallant Pig. I heard he just has really charming stories about animals and the water horse, you know, is about the legend of the Loch Ness Monster and children that find the real Loch Ness. And I'm pretty sure it becomes their friends. This just looks incredibly charming. And I really want to, tr to read it to Peter. Uh, then the, the Borrowers series by Mary Norton. This is a classic children's series about these very tiny, tiny, like fairy size people that live in the first one um, underneath uh, a house. So like in not the basement, but like under the floorboards kind of. Um, and they're called the Borrowers because they, you know, take food and other supplies from the family that they're living underneath. And then there's, I'm pretty sure it's the borrowers abroad, the borrowers afloat. I'm curious to see. Uh, so hopefully, as long as I enjoy the first one in the series, do I have it over there? Oh, I can't grab it from here. But I do have, I think, two or three on hand from the series in the library has the ones that we don't own. Uh, then The Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White. Uh, this is a children's classic that I missed reading as a child. So I want to fix that and I want to read it with Peter. I've heard really wonderful things. I know it involves a swan and a little boy who plays a trumpet, if I'm remembering correctly. So E.B. White also wrote Charlotte's Web um, and Stuart Little. Uh, so really, you know, those are really iconic children's classics. Uh, and then the Tuesdays at the Castle series by Jessica Day George. I read Tuesdays at the Castle last year and I loved it so much. It was one of my favorite books of the year and I really want to get back to that series and enjoy it with Peter because he's at a really great age to enjoy it. Then The Little Prince. This is a French classic. Uh, the people who have read this love this book so much. It seems like it's a really moving, special, whimsical read. Um, I saw the Netflix movie which apparently is very different from the um, from the book. So I don't even know what the actual book is about. Uh, sorry, this is, <laughs> I hope this isn't too boring. Um, then a Long Way from Chicago series by Richard Peck. I'm pretty sure there are three in this series. I really want to read some Richard Peck 
um, middle grade. He is very prolific. He also wrote The Teacher's Funeral. He's supposed to have a ton of humor in his um, books and especially in the Long Way from Chicago series, the last, the third one, which is the last in the series, um, takes place at Christmas time. So I would love to read the first two earlier in the year and then save the third one for the month of December to read aloud. Next is The Dog Who Wouldn't Be by Farley Mowat and Owls and the Family by Farley Mowat. Farley Mowat seems like a really um, fun uh, read aloud author who has comical stories about animals and um, just uh, really like crazy uncanny things happening in his books and really good read aloud material. Then Freddy the Pilot by Walter Brooks. This is a series my dad read some of these uh, and I remember particularly Freddy the Detective as a child. Uh, so I want to um, read Freddy the Pilot. I found it at a library book sale a couple years ago. I think it'd be a great read aloud. Um, it's about the adventures of this pig named Freddy. Um, he, there are, I think, about 30 in the series total. So I just enjoy reading one of them aloud. Next is Rabbit Hill that I would like to reread. It's by Robert Lawson. It is the most charming book that I read a couple years ago about a group of animals that love to glean off a family garden and the family that is living in that house moves out and they have no idea who the new you know what the new people are going to be like if they will be okay then taking out of their harvest in the garden but I specifically want to reread it because then another December read aloud I would like to do is called The Tough Winter which is the sequel to Rabbit Hill. It is out of print I will have to find it um, on A Books I think is where I'm going to try to get it so I will have to get a hold of it but I really want to um, revisit Rabbit Hill because it was such a lovely read aloud and then read the sequel The Tough Winter. Uh, then Nuts to You uh, by Lynn Ray Perkins. This was recommended on the What We Do All Day Reading blog and it's just supposed to be about a group of squirrels so I'm sure it's going to be highly entertaining and um, just crazy and nuts hence the title um, and it looks yes highly entertaining. Um, we have read the first Paddington book, but we could get to more. I think there are about 10 in the series. We own more about Paddington and Paddington Helps Out. Um, so those are two I would love to get to. They are in, the first one was just incredibly charming. I couldn't believe how charming it was. Next is The Children of Noisy Village by Astrid Lindgren. This is the same author who wrote Pippi Longstocking. I don't know much about this one too. I just know when I read the synopsis, it sounded appealing to me. Um, then The Little Gray Men by B.B. is just, you know, two initials for the author's name. And this is about a group of little gnomes and the adventures that they have. It was written, I think, in the 30s. And then there are two sequels. The third one is really unobtainable. But the second one you can still get on um, New York Review Children's Books uh, line has published the first two. So maybe eventually they would publish the third one. And then the Melendi Family Quartet. This includes um, The Saturdays, The Four Story Mistake. I, when I look on Goodreads for books that people who like um, Betsy Tacey, other ones that they like, The Melendi Family Quartet keeps popping up. And Elizabeth Enright is the author. And I know she also wrote the Gone Away Lake books, which I love and cherish so much. Um, so this is, you know, a group of children and it's going to be fun to get to know this new literary family and see their adventures through the course of several books. Um, then we have Heidi by jo Johanna Speary. And this is one that I have, you know, I missed reading as a child and I want to read it to Peter and see what Heidi is all about. I know she lives with her grandfather in the Alps um, and there are goats involved. And that's about all that I know about Heidi. A really quaint uh, pick that I have is the Millie Molly Mandy storybook. This is about a little girl who's named Millicent Margaret Amanda, but her family calls her Millie, what is it? Millie Molly Mandy for short. Um, and I think it's just quaint little short stories um, about her adventures that she has. They're supposed to be really charming. And I love, you know, old fashioned children's books, uh, AKA classic children's books. Um, then How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell. This seems to be a book that will definitely appeal to little boys. It's about, um, you know, this boy trying to make fried worms appealing to eat. And so I think Peter will be all about it. Hopefully it's funny. That's, that's my sense that I get from the cover and the synopsis. 
and Five Little Peppers and How They Grew by Margaret Sidney. This is giving me all of a kind family, little women vibes. Um, and it's about uh, this family and I'm pretty sure they're very impoverished and their struggle to survive and the bond that they have because of that. Totally my the vibe I like in children's literature. And then Unusual Chickens for the Exceptional Poultry Farmer by Kelly Jones. This is an epistolary book about a girl who moves to, I think it's her great uncle's chicken farm, and she writes letters back home about her experiences living on the chicken farm. It's supposed to be hilarious. I really want to get to this one. I love reading a funny read aloud and really look forward to that. And then The Wheel on the School by Minder De Jong. Um, this won the Newbery, a, I think it was in the 30s. It's a very, you know, it's an older children's book and um, a classic. It is, I think, my dad's all-time favorite children's book. I'm pretty sure it's about a group of children um, that their school is in a water wheel and they try to find a way to make the storks come back. The storks have left something like that and it's in the Netherlands. I really want to read it. Then Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake. I am all about, you know, children's chapter books with animals as the protagonists. And Kaylee from Books from MKs made this sound so charming and so whimsical, and I really want to read it. And then lastly, we come to the Clementine series by Sarah Pennypacker. I think for people that like Ramona Quimby or um, who else am I thinking of? Pippi Longstocking, really kind of precocious, mischievous uh, little girl stories. I read the first Clementine book and, you know, she doesn't mean to get into all the scrapes that she does. It just happens. Uh, and she, you could just kind of love her all the more for it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, reading the next in the Clementine series. They're very quick reads. I think I was able to read one like in an afternoon to Peter, but that was pre-Arthur. So we'll see how it goes. Those, that is a big old list of books that I'm hoping to read aloud. Thank you for watching and I will be back for another video soon. Bye.